All right, so the evidence for the heliocentric model um, didn't come directly after Copernicus published the model uh, because at that time there weren't very good observations uh, that would distinguish at all between the heliocentric and the geocentric model. So it wasn't until um, Galileo that the scientific method really started to be applied to problems in astronomy. And so the modern um, conception of the scientific method is that there are some you know, observations that we notice in the world around us that lead us to ask questions about why and how those things work. Um, these lead to hypotheses that we make predictions about and then we develop experiments or make observations in order to test those predictions. And this cycle um, in reality is a lot messier and you know, sometimes your experiment will lead to questions of its own during the design phase instead of after the observation phase. Um, so this basic um, link between observations and then predictions is the heart of the method. And it was Galileo who was the first one to really carefully observe um, many things outside of astronomy. So he was kind of the, um, the first person to observe lots of things about physics, um, such as acceleration, and actually do experiments to measure the acceleration of objects. And so it's due to Galileo that we um, started to apply measurement very carefully to lots of different problems. Um, Galileo didn't invent the telescope, but he did improve its design and he used it to observe things that um, things in astronomy to actually test the heliocentric model. And some of the things that he observed were really amazing. So here is an image of the moon sketched by Galileo where he could actually see craters on its surface and mountains. And this was contradictory to the perspective of the time that um, the moon was some kind of perfect celestial body. And you know, these imperfections called that into question. Galileo also was able to observe stars that were too faint to see by the naked eye and also observed the moons around Jupiter. So Jupiter has four major moons, Io, Europa, Ganymede, and Callisto uh, that orbit. And Galileo was able to see these through his telescope and sketch their positions in the sky around Jupiter at different times or at the same time every day. And so therefore um, kind of map out their orbits. And it was really amazing because it showed that um, could be objects or other objects in our solar system. So the fact that Jupiter had moons around it um, was a complete surprise. It meant if things could go around Jupiter and Jupiter could be the center of some orbit, maybe the Earth wasn't the center after all. Galileo was also the first to observe Venus's phases. And this was really the kind of nail in the coffin for the geocentric model. Because if we look here at a geocentric model, here Earth is being orbited by Venus and then by the sun, which is farther away. And in the geocentric model, the sun would always be illuminating the side of Venus that's far away from the Earth. And so we would only ever see crescent phases. But in a heliocentric model, where Venus goes around the sun and Earth is just on the outside, of that orbit, then sometimes when Venus was on, was farther away from the sun than us, right, on the opposite side of the sun, we would see a almost full phase of Venus or what we call a gibbous phase. We would also be able to see more half phases as well as crescents. And so if we could observe all of the phases of Venus, then that would show that the um, geocentric model was wrong. And Galileo was the first to observe these phases um, because, they're, because Venus is you know, so small in the sky that you had to have a telescope in order to make this observation. All right, so all of this evidence for heliocentrism from Galileo really took you Earth out of the center of the universe. And this was, um, if you'll excuse the pun, Earth shattering at the time um, because it demoted Earth to uh, just one of many planets, whereas our Earth used to seem like it was in a special favored position. And this idea that um, earthly observers are not special and privileged is called now the Copernican principle. And this was a big shift in astronomy, but it was also a huge shift in philosophy. All right, so I have a poll question. 
which is what is the best test of a scientific hypothesis?